Amen. Thank God for this beautiful day. Thank God for everyone that's on there on the um, Zoom this morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and it's a beautiful day to be saved. We have a wonderful lesson today. Um, we have up here, our quarterly focus is uh, prophets faithful to God's covenant. So we're still in the midst of prophets faithful to God's covenant. Our lesson today, our lesson title, we're in lesson number nine and the title is Micaiah speaking truth to power. And that Bible basis lesson scriptures are coming from 1 King chapter 12, verses 15 through 23 and 26 through 28. Our Bible truth, God uses the prophet Micaiah to speak truth, even though King Ahab rejects the message. Our memory verse and Micaiah saith, as the Lord liveth, saith the Lord. <clears throat> I'm sorry, let me try that again. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. And that's 1 King 22 verses 14. Our lesson aim is that by the end of this lesson, we will defend <clears throat> Micaiah's boldness in declaring the word of the Lord, aspire to be like Micaiah when speaking the word of the Lord, and commit to telling those in power what the Lord has said. Amen. 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 And I, I, I promise you, I work on this throat 30 minutes before it's time, so forgive me if I still need to do that clearing thing. Um, but again, our lesson title, Micaiah, speaking truth to power. Anybody, any comments on our, on our outline today? Any comments? Well, I have a question. Uh-huh. Did I hear someone? Can you, can you hear me? Just a little bit. Let me take, let me take the uh, off. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that I love the, the title because um, we live in the, in, in the days where, you know, we don't look at polit politicians. We, we, we think highly of politicians and not, you know, the merely people that the power, the people have the power and mm -hmm. the truth, um, to them. So I just, just love the title and just uh, ready for the, the teaching of it. I don't want to say anything that you may bring forth. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. Well, let me just ask this question then to all of you. What does it mean to speak truth to power? What does that mean to you, speaking truth to power? Over the last um, four, uh, four years, I heard a lot of this well, not a lot, but I heard it from time to time. I've heard uh, different pastors talk about uh, being able to speak truth to power, and we've seen a lot of evidence of when that hasn't been done throughout our four, um, the last four or five years. But our title, our lesson today is just it's it's just great and it's timely. It's very much timely. Um, as we, we live in this time, and you're all very much aware of it, we live in this time of alternative facts, conspiracy theories, and disinformation. You know, um, I was looking back over my notes this morning, and I said, you know what, disinformation doesn't even make sense. So um, I decided to look that up. And disinformation, the definition is false information intended to mislead. But as I uh, thought about all of these things that we're hearing today, alternative facts, conspiracy theories, disinformation, they are all fancy words, y'all, for untruth, all fancy words for lies. And I don't know if you realize that, I'm sure you have, there is a lying spirit going about throughout our land today. Uh, the definition that the uh, commentators put in our book, the definition of a lying spirit is said, is a spirit that is sent to entice, trick, or deceive. It's an untruth or lie 
a way that is contrary to God. Uh, we live in a time when many people today would rather hear the truth and, and believe, I mean, they would rather hear or believe a lie rather than the truth. And we've seen that in the leadership positions, the positions of authority, those people who are afraid to say the truth for fear of what the people, what the masses would say. And we also have seen that in the people that are in the supporting roles of the leadership. Uh, they're afraid to, they are afraid to speak the truth to authorities for fear of that authority. They fear what will happen. Uh, they fear the repercussions. And we have seen that. And so many choose to be silent uh, rather than speak the truth. And it's, all, it's not always easy. We all know that. It's not always easy. Sometimes, many times, those in uh, power might not want to hear it, as we see in our lesson today with Ahab. So my question right now, before we go further, my question to you is, um, what are some consequences to speaking the truth to power? What are some consequences? And I also have a flip side to that. What, what are some consequences to speaking the truth to power? Anybody? Well, you could be um, imprisonment sometime. <clears throat> you could take a chance of, uh, yeah. And um, because they can't handle the truth, you know, sometimes that's, 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 that's one of the things, you know, imprisonment, you know, or maybe even death. Amen. 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 Imprisonment. Anybody else? What are some of the consequences of speaking the those truth to power? power? Will, those in power will consider your truth, the truth as a um an offense a criticism uh -huh. of their authority amen and like um you can do, you can lose your job you can lose your life sometimes uh -huh. amen amen imprisonment you could lose your job you could lose your life anybody else amen and, and those are some of the things that i wrote down basically your job your position your life so on the other side of that what are some consequences, some consequences to not speaking the truth to power? There are consequences to not speaking the truth as well, right? One is pretty obvious. God is not pleased with us. Disobedient, that's right. You're not being obedient to following what God has given us to do. So who do you fear? Man, or you fear God? Amen. 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 Anybody else? It also may cause detriment to others. Uh-huh. Amen. Not necessarily yourself, but to others as well. Amen. Cause detriment to others and, and, and as well as yourself. And when I thought about it, when I'm looking at what's going on in the world today, those who even just in the world, in the natural, I can name three, two or three people uh, within the last four years that did not speak truth to, pow uh, to power. And so they lost their reputation. They lost their good name. And Christians can't afford to do that. I'm gonna tell you this real quick and I promise you I'm not gonna stay there. And if you have a comment, you can certainly comment on it. When this whole thing, the last four years, uh, the previous administration, when it came about, my I, I wasn't happy with it, but my, I had two thoughts that kind of gave me a little bit of comfort. Well, my main one was that I know God is in control and he's working it together for the good. And then on the natural side, I thought, well, you know, the Republicans are not going to let him go off the rail. <laughs> Silly me, right? Um, and then another one was the fact that I knew that Vice President Pence was a Christian. So I knew certainly he would speak truth to power. But we found as the years went on, those things did not happen. I, we, we've seen people lose their reputation. I'm thinking about those generals that came and was a part of this and didn't speak up. This is just on the natural. So we can see even on the natural how these things happen when you don't speak truth to power. Uh, what was her name? Dr. Burst, I think was, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, General Kelly, General Malley, all these people have excellent uh, uh, reputations, uh, excellent name. But when they came and became a part and they didn't speak truth to power, they lost all of that. 
because they were complacent. And many of us, and if we don't know, uh, silence, if we're not saying anything, that means that we're in agreement. If we don't say anything, as Christians, we can't afford that. We can't afford to mess up our good name as Christians because that brings rebuke uh, to the name of God. So we can't afford to, to be quiet. Uh, Galatians 1 and 10 says, uh, Paul was speaking to the Galatians and he said, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Or if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of God. And I decided to look at that in the New Living Translation. And what it says in the New Living Translation is obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing men were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Now, that is some powerful stuff when you think about it. He said, if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So we have to get past that caring about, you know, being so concerned about what men say. That's what I love about Micaiah in our lesson today. He wasn't concerned. And, and, uh, and around for a while, he knew the consequences. He had dealt with uh, Ahab in the past, but he was determined to speak the truth. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that movie, uh, uh, God's Not Dead 2, the second part of God's Not Dead. The lady in there, she made a very powerful comment, I thought. She said, I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than to stand with the world and be judged by God. So we have to make a decision. This world is not going to be here forever. Amen. And my thing, my thought on the whole thing is to know that in trust, if we have trust in God and we know he's working together things for our good, then we don't have to be concerned about what man says. Amen. So our lesson today, we have a prophet, as I mentioned, Micaiah, who is a prophet of God. And he is not as afraid to speak the truth to a king who has the power to take his life has the power to banish him into prison, but he chooses to say what God said. Comments. And if no comments, let's go ahead and go into our scriptures then. We have uh, several scriptures, I believe it's 12. So if I can get three readers, if you would read four scriptures each. Again, our lesson title, Micaiah speaking truth to power. Ogi came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramagiliad to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but which is true in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master, let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab and he may go, that he may go up and fall at Ram Ramoth Gilead, and one said on, on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, 
thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and with the water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, if thou return it all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, hearken, O people, every one of you. Amen. Thank you all for reading those. Anybody, anybody, anything jump out at you um, from these scriptures? What, what, which one of these scriptures kind of resonated with you? For me, it was it, it was the, the beginning of of these these scriptures here, um, verses fifteen and sixteen, when um, he he was they was asking for a prophet of of God to speak the truth, and so the, the lion spirit was going on in the land with amongst the other prophets. So Micaiah was being sarcastic. Um, speaking said that it meaning that the land would be delivered to you. They was they were speaking of the uh, Roman Gilead, and um, he said, but the king the king noticed that he was speaking sarcastically. He wanted to speak truth. The sixteen says, how many times must I demand you, that you speak only the truth to me when you speak for the Lord? And so my, then Micaiah gave him the, the truth in the verse seventeen, and. Um, the, the other the other king said, see, didn't I tell you that he speak only evil? Because if you be back up, you know, in verse five or eight, um, Amen already said this, there is one prophet of God, but who I hate because he always speaking evil. So, you know, the, that just, it resonated and stand out with me. You know, it goes with that saying that said, you want the truth, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> so I thought about Hey, that. how did you know I was thinking that? <laughs> <laughs> Great man, I think you like. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Excellent. Anybody else? And you know, for me, just like uh, uh, like he said, it for me, it was verse. Uh, actually, it was verse fourteen for me. Micaiah said, "As the Lord, no, that's not the one. I'm sorry, verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle?" Or, or shall we prevail? And he answered him, go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. And I did it in Lorene's talk, and I was thinking, you know what he said? He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go on up there, you're going to do good. Let's see how that works out. He was being sarcastic, amen, but he took, because he knew what Ahab wanted to hear. He also knew what God said, amen. Anybody else, anything jump out at you? I would look at verse 28 when basically Micaiah is saying, okay, you can put me in prison and you can do whatever you want to do. But if you come back, you will know that the Lord didn't lie. But everybody around here, pay attention to what I just said. Amen. And you will know that I've spoken the words of the Lord. Amen. 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 And that's how we will know a false and a true prophet if that thing come to pass. Yeah, Micaiah as she said, said, if you come back safely, that mean God didn't tell me this. I haven't spoken what God told me to say. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Any comments? Excellent. Amen. So let's go ahead then and look at our story. A little bit of a background. We've talked about how the nation of Israel had become a divided nation. We talked about that a while back under Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Um, they became the northern and the southern kingdom. In our lesson today, Ahab, is the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. Now, Ahab, as many of you already know, uh, if not all, Ahab is an evil king. Well, he was an evil king. He did more wickedly, the scripture said, than any kings before him. He had a history of rebellion against God. And this is going to help us as we get near what God had planned for Ahab, what happened later in the lesson. 
Uh, so he had a history of rebellion against God. He married Jezebel, who was an idol worshiper. And we all know about Jezebel, who worshiped Baal. And Jezebel influenced Ahab to make uh, influence him to make evil decisions, to not make good decisions. That means you got to watch who you hook up with, right? Um, Ahab, and uh, to get a little bit of history on where we are today, I'm sorry, did I hear somebody? Amen. Ahab had looked out among his uh, the area and he saw a vineyard that was owned by Naboth and he wanted that vineyard, but Naboth wouldn't sell it to him. So Ahab was in the palace acting all depressed and everything and Jezebel said, don't worry about it, I'll get it for you. So Jezebel sent out and had Naboth, uh, had Naboth killed. Uh, and so and she came back and she told him, go out and go ahead and possess it. You have it now. Naboth is no longer here. And so he goes out and he is went to possess that vineyard and God declared judgment on him. Sent Elijah out to let him know he had declared judgment on him. And how many of you know, whenever God says something, it is going to come to pass. Amen. So, and aside from Ahab, the next character we have in our lesson today is Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the king of the southern kingdom of Judah. He was a righteous king. He did what was right in the eyes of God. So the uh, the two kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom, they had, a, they had enemy, em, enmity between the uh, two kingdoms, but they had an agreement or they had signed a treaty that whenever one uh, enemies came up against one, the other would have to defend that one. So they had a treaty to do that. In our lesson today, the subject of what's going on or the reason for the battle today is Rehab, uh, Ramoth Gilead. And Ramoth Gilead was a city that was given to, the Israel, to Israel, but it had changed hands several times. Um, this particular city in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe it was, uh, Moses had assigned this place as a place where if someone had in, in, um, unintentionally killed someone, they could run to this place. They could go to this place and it would be a place of safety for them. Uh, so Ramoth, Ramoth Gilead was currently, in our lesson, he was currently occupied by the Syrians. And uh, King Benadad was the king of Syria. In verse number one of chapter 22, it says that Syria and um, Israel, they had been at peace for three years. But Ahab decided, he, this was something he had determined to do, that he was going to go and take back possession of Ramoth, of Ramoth Gilead. Uh, from the Syrians. So he went to King Jehoshaphat to ask him for assistance. Will you go in and fight with us as we go in to fight against the uh, Syrians? And of course, Jehoshaphat, but remember, Jehoshaphat was a righteous king. So Jehoshaphat said, I will go, but first, Let's see what God has to say about this. So Ahab, uh, um, and notice that Ahab never said anything about looking to God to find out what to do. It was Jehoshaphat. Uh, so uh, Jehoshaphat, so should we go or should we wait? And the prophets of, he had his 400 were prophets of Baal. They were false prophets. So they all together agreed, yes, go ahead. The Lord will give the king the victory. Because Jehosh Jehoshaphat was a righteous king, he wasn't satisfied with what the 400 uh, prophets of Baal said. He said, isn't there a king? Uh, don't we have a, a prophet of God, rather, that we can ask? And so Ahab said, there is one, just a little bit of background on where we get to today. He said, there is one, but he, he said, I hate him because he never say anything, any good news to me. I, that's Micaiah. He never give me any good news. So I hate him. So Micaiah, we find out, was a true prophet of God. That's why Ahab didn't like him. He did not avoid God's word, even when people did not want to hear it even if it might cause him. He was committed to being faithful to God. He had a history, Micaiah and Ahab, as I mentioned, they had a history between them. 
Ahab said that he hated him. So he told him what God, because he told him what God wanted him to say. So, um, and we want to keep in mind throughout this, and this, uh, to, the reason I keep pointing this out is because this is going to be important when we get down in verse 23. Um, so we won't have, yeah, when we get down, accepting what it is that, um, that uh, Micaiah sees today. Amen. So Ahab had made up in his mind to go into battle. He did not want to hear what anyone uh, that he didn't want to hear anyone disagree with him. He had made up his mind, regardless of what anyone said, he was going to do it. So Ahab decided to go ahead and he sent for Micaiah, even though he didn't want to hear it. And so he, the person that went out to get Micaiah told him, as sometimes friends or acquaintances, people would tell us, he told him, look, all of the other prophets told him good, said to go ahead. Now you go in and you just go along with them. You tell them the same thing that the rest of them said. And I'm going to pause right there for comments. He told them, you go in there and you say the same thing all the rest of them. 400 prophets said for him to go up. Micaiah, you go in and you say the same thing. Comments. Spirit of lies. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> So then this brings and this brings us up to our lesson today. So Micaiah comes to the king, as we can see in our lesson, and the king asks him, Micaiah, should I go up to Ramoth Gilead? And his initial response was like brother, uh, uh, like Minister Wright and I have already said, it was sarcastic. He knew what Ahab wanted to hear, and he knew that Ahab wouldn't believe him anyway. So he was being sarcastic. Yeah, go ahead. Go on up there. You're going to take it. Don't worry about it. Go on up and take the land. And when you think about it, the fact that Ahab had already made up his mind and he knew what he was going to do regardless, you have to, when you think about it, how can it help those? If we don't tell people the truth, how can it possibly help them? Um, it might, um, you know, massage their egos for a minute, but how can that help them to not tell them? Many times when people say, tell me the truth, they don't want to hear it. I wonder how many times that we told people, tell me the truth, but we don't want to hear it. We just make up in our mind that we're going to do something and, and we, we want to do it. And then we get angry if somebody come up and warn us against it. And that's what's happening with Ahab today. One of the little comments that it said, and our, our commentator said in our lesson, he said, it's not wise simply to seek advice. Wisdom is acting on the counsel that is received. Amen. So even though we have already made up our minds sometime, when someone comes to us and tell us what thus saith the Lord, we need to be open to receive it. And we need to be open to tell others when we know that God has told us to say that. So as I mentioned, Ahab and Micaiah have a history. He knew that Micaiah was only saying, he knew Micaiah well enough to know that Micaiah was just saying what he knew that Ahab wanted him to say. So he, because he already said that he don't, he don't ever prophesy anything good against me. So he knew that if he was in agreement with the other 400 prophets, that he wasn't telling the truth. So the king rebukes him and Micaiah told him, he said, you're going to lose, basically, in those scriptures there. He said, I see uh, the Israel scattered upon the hill as a sheep without a shepherd. There will be a slaughter, in other words, and the king was going to die. The king would be killed. Now, verse 19 through 22 gives us a vision that, um, that Micaiah saw of what was going to happen. So I'm gonna read that again real quick. And then I have a couple of things. The scripture lets us know in here that God had used a lion spirit in the mouth of the 400 prophets. That's what um, uh, uh, Micaiah told him, told them, oh, that's what we're getting from this. And he said, when he told him, how many times have I told you to, to tell me the truth? So in uh, verse 19, and he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit 
and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And he said, thou shall persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. And therefore, behold, verse 23 says, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Amen. Before I take a look, before I give a couple of points I want to make regarding those scriptures there. Anybody, any comments on those scriptures? A couple of points that we want to keep in mind in these scriptures that Micaiah is seeing a vision. God has given him the vision of course, so that he can understand what is going on. Uh, we know there are no liars in heaven because we know that the scripture tells us they won't even tarry in his sight. Liars won't tarry in his sight. But these scriptures have, this vision has been given to Micaiah so that he can understand what's going on. What's at work here? Some of the points I wanted us to keep in mind is that Ahab was very prideful. He was very rebellious. And as I said before, he had made up in his mind before he asked anybody. He made up in his mind that he was going to go to battle. He wanted to do, and he was going to do what he wanted to do. How many times have we done that? Just made up in our mind. I just want to do this. And then we'll say things like, well, I'm, I'm going to just see what the Lord say. Uh, and in the back, we're thinking, I'm, I'm going to do this, though, or we have our backup plan. But again, keep in mind, he was very rebellious. And then the second point I want us to keep in mind, that God had already proclaimed judgment. Remember what I told you earlier about the vineyard when he went in and took over Naboth's vineyard. God had already proclaimed judgment on Ahab because of the evil. It was not just that incident. It was overall, he was rebellious against God. So he had already proclaimed judgment and that he was going to die. The next point I want to make is because all of these things were already in place, God allowed this lying spirit to convince Ahab to go to battle so that he might be killed. And the reason that I pointed this out is because, as I don't know about any of you, I can remember when I first got saved, the thing I had a hard time kind of, like they say, wrapping my mind around, when Judas portrayed Jesus, I used to think, now, Judas really didn't, he, he didn't have a chance because we know that what God put in place is going to come to pass. But as the years went on, I began, as I studied the word and began to understand a little better, I realized, no, Judas, God didn't set him up. Uh, I mean, he had to do, it had to be done. Judas were, uh, lost out because he, just like Ahab, he did, God allowed him to do what was in him to do. It was already declared that Judas would betray Jesus. Ahab had already made up in his mind that he was going to go out there. Judas was a deceitful. He loved money. And so he, and, and, and um, what really helps us to understand, and I'm going to read this. If you want to, you can still put it up, um, Brother Damien, and, um, Minister Wright, I'm sorry, in the, um, the King James or whatever version you have it in, James 1, 13 through 15. So we we'll understand what's going on. The third point, God allowed the, lift, the lying spirit to convince Ahab to go to battle. And I want to read because it kind of sounds like he was set up. Basically, what God proclaims, it's going to come to pass. Um, James 1, 10 through 15, I believe, it says, and I'm sorry, and remember, when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drags us away. 
These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. In other words, we are tempted when because of what's inside of us, our sinful desires. God cannot tempt with evil. He will us to come out. We know that uh, as far as when we're doing what God has given us to do, Deuteronomy 28 talks about the blessings and the curses. If we are obedient to God, we're going to be blessed. But if we are not obedient to God, we're going to be cursed. In other words, instead of protecting us from those things, God would just allow us. Um, I think I heard somebody say, Amen. God will just allow us. If we want to just do it and we just convince we want to do it, God will just allow us to go ahead. And then we'll end up suffering the consequences. King James Version, again, the 15, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it finishes, bringeth forth death. Uh, Ahab was allowed to go in and fight this battle because he had made up in his mind. It didn't matter what anybody was going to do. He was going to do it anyway. He had made up in his mind, I'm going to go in and I'm going to fight this battle. So God just gave him reinforcements. He'll put the lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets, the 400 prophets that empowered him to go in there and do what he wanted to do, which in uh, the results of that was that God's judgment were carried out. He had proclaimed that evil would come, that death would come uh, for Ahab, and it did because of his arrogance and his rebellion. Comments real quick. Not real quick, comments. Why do you think it was uh, real quick? Uh, why do you think that lion spirit was successful? Why do you think it was successful? Why do we get duped? Is that a word? Why do, how do we get tripped, by, tripped up by people? Help me out, somebody. Why did that lion spirit work? Because Ahab had a big ego. Um, he, he wanted to do what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know? And it Amen. was easy for the, for the lion spirit to, to persuade him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, and that's and a, a, mm -hmm. Go ahead. A spirit is something that is it's contagious. It's easy to be passed, passed on and everyone is doing it. You, they said there was 400 prophets. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have them all saying one thing and then you standing out because at that given time, the prophets were scared to tell the truth. Amen. Mm-hmm. Even so, so that fear, mm -hmm. the fear way came with the fear, along with the fear and then with the contagious spirit that's going around, it was easy um, to, to tell a lie than to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Scared of power. Scared of what's going to happen if they tell uh, them. Um, sometime, and I think uh, back in those days and maybe even uh, a couple of centuries ago, uh, remember uh, the even the messenger, sometimes the messenger that just bought the bad news. They got, even if they weren't a prophet, they just come in there and bring the bad news and they would kill the, uh, the, the messenger. And this is what is happening with these with the prophets during these times. Many times they were killed because they were speaking the truth and the people did not want to hear it. In this case, the king wanted to hear what he wanted them to agree with what he had to say. Um, anybody else? To help us not to be duped into doing things that God did not tell us to do, uh, we need to be mindful. We can't be rebellious. We have to listen to what God tells us to do. We can't have itchy ears, y'all. We can't want everybody to, you know, want, tell me, what, what did God say for me? What did God give you concerning me? Instead of just waiting on God, waiting on God, get in his word, listen. Um, to what he will have you to do. Don't make up in your mind, truly, sincerely want to please God. When you decide or you determine that you're going to do something, be open to truly hear God. When you say, I'm going to see what God says, be truthful with yourself and with God. Be open to hear and make up in your mind that you're going to do it. 
So the scriptures say, and I know, and we know that all things work together for our good. So if we want to do these things, but it's not according to God's will, then we need to just trust that God knows what he's doing. Any other comments? So um, Ahab didn't like what Micaiah did, so he threw him into prison. He threw him into prison and he told him, he told them to just feed him with bread and water until he returned. And that's in verse 28. And uh, and our superintendent told us earlier the results of that. Micaiah said to him, he said to him, if you return safely, then I am not a prophet. And he said to the people around him, mark my word. You just watch and see. And again, a true prophet, those things that God told him to say, those things are going to come to pass. So even though he was put in prison, he did not take down. He yet told him, if you come back, uh, in other words, he's telling him, you're going to die, Ahab. But what happened? Still, Ahab went into battle. He still went in there. And later on in the scriptures, it tells us that he was killed. Even with his little plan, he went in there with him and uh, Jehoshaphat. He told Jehoshaphat to, you know, dress in his kingly attire. And he wasn't going to dress in his. He was going to go in in disguise, thinking that the people wouldn't notice him. But the king, uh, um, the king of Syria had already told the people, our only person that we are concentrating on is the king of Israel. We're looking for Ahab. That's the only one we worry about getting. And as the people came and they saw the king, uh, Benadad and all of his kingly stuff, and they were going after him, and then they realized, hmm, that's not Ahab. And, and the scriptures say, and to tell you how intentional God is, the scripture said that some little random soldier just randomly shot an arrow down through the midst of the battle and it went and it hit King Ahab. God is intentional. What he says is going to come to pass. It doesn't matter what we do. Ahab tried to disguise himself to not get killed. But again, this random soldier just threw it through there, God being intentional, and, and I forget exactly what the scripture said, how it said it, but it just happened to go into this little place that was not covered. He had on his armor, but that, that arrow was able to go in there and it struck in a very strategic place and Ahab died. He was propped up all throughout the day, but he died just like Micaiah has said. Comments. So we're going to get ready. I'm just about ready to close it up. I have a couple of more questions and then we're going to go ahead. Uh, my question is, so how do you respond when you have told the truth, but it was rejected? How do you respond? I'm not asking you how you should respond. I'm asking you, how do you respond right now? We've learned to do better if you don't already do it. But how do you respond when you have uh, told the truth, but it was rejected? Honestly, man, that's a hurting feeling. I'm going to just be honest with you. When, you know, when you tell somebody the truth, that's, if, if I'm understanding the question correctly, mm -hmm. I'm giving somebody the truth and it's rejected, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times, it, it, all, the only thing I really do, to be honest with you, I pray that they, that they, they take heed mm -hmm. of coming to a, a, a knowledge of understanding. Mm -hmm. And not to jump back, but something you said um, a previous uh, was, People are quick for an itching ear. Mm -hmm. They're itching to tell me, tell me this, mm -hmm. tell me what thus said the Lord. And, uh -huh. and like you said, if you just read the Bible and he will reveal to you too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when the person say what God said, a lot of times it's it should be confirmation. Yeah. I look at it as confirmation. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I, I, I began to just pray that that they will open up their eyes and, and get a clear understanding of what it is that I'm trying to convey, especially when you know that you know. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like, I know two plus two is is it's four mm -hmm. and I'm trying to convince you and you still not Don't adhering to, I, I, yeah, that's, that could be kind of a, man, I, I really wish you could kind of see this, but I'm going to pray that God open up your, your, your eyes mm -hmm. to, to understand. So I pray. Amen. 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 I'm right there with you. That's one of the words I wrote down. You feel that rejection. Anybody else? I still, that stuff and I still work on. I, me personally, I shut down because I know I get angry. Because if I know that I know that I know is the truth and the person's not listening, 
I, I, for me, I just like, I can't understand why you can't see this. So I mm-hmm. get angry. So I personally shut down, walk away, be like, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I get cranky, upset, even though I know, because I've heard quite a few times um, different pastors say, and this is geared towards church, different pastors say, don't fight, don't fight it, don't debate it, just say what it needs to be said, don't, don't, de- don't debate it. But for me, this is with anything, whether it's church, whether it's work, if I know it's the truth and this person is not getting it, I get upset. So I shut down, walk away. I'm like, done, leave me alone. <laughs> so I, that's something I still have to work on. Amen, amen. Anybody else? I look at it, um, if I'm telling you the truth and I know from experience or I just, it's something that I know and I'm telling you this and you don't accept it, my motto is, experience is the next best teacher Mm -hmm. i not that i am not concerned about you but i have given you the truth Mm -hmm. and it's up to you to accept it amen 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 anybody else amen we can't take it personally even though it's it's hard because they're right there uh because we have to remember also that they are rejecting they're not rejecting you they are rejecting god they're rejecting a message from god and you don't have to worry about it god's going to take care of that he he doesn't like rebellion god's going to take care of that and it's hard sometimes to uh to not get angry it's hard because you're trying to tell them and you, it's like you want to put it in their head. How come you can't get this? It's right there. It's very obvious. But I'm going to tell you what, God can show you. My mama uh, would say, I can show you a lot better than I can tell you. So God can show you if you don't want to just hear it. Amen. Good comments. One, uh, one other question. How do you respond when you have told the truth? This is a good one too, y'all. How do you respond when you have told the truth, it was rejected, and that person suffered as a result of that failure to accept it? How do you respond to that? Uh, I told you. I told you. No, I'm joking. No, no, no. no. Emma, have you been listening to my study? No. <laughs> And but validation, you know, but so, so my prayer is for me that I don't fall into the, well, I really never, but sometimes, honestly, I'm going to just be transparent and be like, you, you want to come to fruition. So you could honestly say, you know, I, I told you, that's the mm-hmm. thing that God is yet working on. I'm just being honest. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I hope I ain't the only one. Don't look at me like I'm a bad guy, but that's, mm-hmm. that, that, that part of me is kind of like, mm, I tried, I tried, mm. I told mm-hmm. you, but but realistically, you never want anything to come upon anybody. So again, my response would be, mm, you know, let's mm-hmm. continue to pray. You know what I'm saying? That God, that it doesn't happen next time. We learn from our we learn Amen. from our um, challenges. Right? Amen. Amen. Good comments, uh, First Lady. Did I see you? So the experience is the best teacher. It is. Uh huh. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just gotta let them go. And uh, my mother used to say, have a saying, oh, you don't believe me, right? Mm-hmm. You one mm-hmm. of those person got to run into the brick mm-hmm. wall and then you mm-hmm. believe. So sometimes you gotta be the one that even though they tell you what's mm-hmm. right and they tell you because they mm-hmm. know they have experienced it, they have seen it down the line and they know and you don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. But once I learned that lesson, it hurt it. And mm-hmm. my mother was there and was there to, you know, to more or less comfort me a little mm-hmm. bit, you know, and, and let me know that, you know, well, you know, I know you're going through it, but I'm still going to pray for uh-huh. you. And, and and you just got to go amen. through it. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Therefore, for, um, uh-huh. for me, it's in line with what everyone says for the, the first first question that you know, I grew around the, the elderly and they always was tell me when they when someone's you know speaking the truth and they didn't accept it, mm-hmm. uh, just say, well, you just keep living. Uh-huh. You'll see. Just, just keep living. You'll see. Mm-hmm. And then from this question that you just asked, it's more in line with co-pastor. Uh, before, you know, with Troy, I say, I've learned that, you know, you don't want to say, I told you, because yeah. they know it. They mm-hmm. are really guilty. But mm-hmm. that's, your, your flesh won't mm-hmm. <laughs> say that. Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. However, I just had a recent uh, conversation when I told someone the truth and it, they they rejected it and they came and said, uh, 
say uh, God worked with signs and, and miracles, you know, those, so he's going to show you the sign is, mm-hmm. just, you know, you, they are lessons in life. We mm-hmm. can either learn or uh, have those, those same thing repeat. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, what, what have you learned from this? I'll ask that question. Mm-hmm. What have you learned? From that? Amen. 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 Excellent comments, you all. Amen. I'm just going to recount and I have a couple of other things, but I'm not going to go there because I'm pretty sure that my superintendent is probably going to hit on those. So, but again, just to recount our lesson um, title and our lesson aim, Micaiah speaking truth to power. Lesson aim, by the end of this lesson, we will defend Micaiah's boldness in declaring the word of God. Aspire to be like Micaiah when speaking the word of the Lord, regardless of if people want to hear it or not, and then commit to tell those in power what the Lord has said. Those in power have a soul too. They have a soul too. So we have to commit to it, to tell those in power what the Lord has said. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn you over to our superintendent for her comments and to open for questions. Amen, very good lesson. Um, First Lady, do you have any additional comments? All I can say is Lord help me um, to have courage, to have the courage to speak the truth in every situation, even if it hurts, to speak the truth. Amen. <laughs> District Missionary, do you have any comments? No, it was a great lesson, and I like the 14th verse, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Copas, do you have any um, comments? Excellent. Excellent. And I love this as well, um, just missionary. And no, excellent. Excellent. Amen. No comments. Thank you. Amen. And just as uh, Micaiah, we have to be bold in what we, when we speak the truth. Because it's not going to always be popular. Um, people are going to take it the wrong way, even when they know that truth is what they need to hear. They're not always going to take it um, um, right. Um, and we, however, we can't just run up on people and just start spouting stuff. We have to have know what we're talking about and have the, the correct demeanor to bring it to them. I mean, it's easy to be a yes man. Anybody can be a yes man or a yes woman, but is it helping is the thing. Truth does not change even when someone doesn't like it. It doesn't change. And God's answers many times will put a barrier between our fleshly desires and our sovereign will that he wants us to portray because we may, may not want to tell the truth because we don't want to hurt their feelings but that's not it. We have to tell the truth and be truthful in God's word and in everything that he gives us to give whomever we're to give it to. And that's the way Micaiah was. Straight out truth. And I always say truth is truth. I don't care who's telling it. It's up to the individual to accept it. Are there any other comments from anyone? If not, this was a great lesson. Meditate on it and go back into it and, and um, pull out stuff that you might think that you need. I'm going to ask Minister Wright if he would close us out in prayer. Amen. With all hearts and mind clear. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you yet for another successful virtual Sunday school. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the lesson that has once forth. We thank you for each and every that has a simple here virtually, Lord. He and she that has an ear, let them hear, Lord. We ask that you pour him back into the Sunday school teacher from which she poured out from the Lord. Lord, that you bless us to have us to speak boldly the truth to power as Micaiah has done here, Lord. Lord, allow us to continue to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord. If we said anything that would not, did not glorify you, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you forgive us, Lord. If we said anything to forgive, for, uh, offend our brothers and sisters, we ask, Lord, that we find in our hearts forgive one another, Lord, as you have forgiven us. Lord, as we get ready to dismiss from this service, but never from your presence, we ask, Lord, that you continue to be with us, guide us, protect us, and lead us, Lord. 
and that you get the glory, the honor, and praises in your son Jesus' name, the Christ we do pray. Amen. Amen.